So this is the Finland tourism map. We have 15 places on here. So the first one is Levy's Ski Resort. So Levy's Ski Resort is in Lapland or Northern Finland and it's just 15 minutes away from an airport. It's never busy because there are limited accommodations so you can go anywhere and there's no wait time. So Levy Ski Resort has 44 short and relatively short runs that span 40 kilometers. It rises to about 531 meters. It gets pretty cold in the winter, about negative 17 degrees Celsius. Um, next up here we have the Northern Lights. The Northern Lights are visible from late August to April. You can go skiing, hiking, cross country, and you can even ride dog sleds to see the Northern Lights. Those are usually the traditions to go see them. Um, you can see them in lots of places, but mainly the north. So next is Santa Claus Village. It's based in Rovan, in Finland, and there are cafes and restaurants also. The village is eight kilometers to the north of Rovan, and you can reach there along Highway 4 or by bus. So there is no entrance fee, and it's open all year round, so you can go whenever you want. Next we have the Tatama Science Center. It is located in Ulu, Finland. It has a 3D cinema, which shows the depth of jungles, oceans, lakes, space, and even like when dinosaurs are around. Um, it is the second, second largest screen in Finland that they show so far, and it is 153 square, square meters. Also in the science center, it has 150 hands-on attractions and demonstrations of things around Finland. So next is the snow castle of Kemi. It's located at the very bottom of Kemi, Finland. There is an actual hotel that is made out of ice, and there are hotel rooms that you can stay in. And everything is made out of ice, even like the beds and the tables and chairs. Um, you must come prepared because there's no key or else the ice will melt. Next we have Lake Siama. It is located in the northeast or the southeast of Finland. Um, the area of the lake is 443 square meters. It is a very nice tourism spot with lots of water, hills, and forest around it. It is a good sport. This lake is a good source for transportation of goods between towns and cities. Um, next is Rokua National Park. So it is near Ulu, Finland. Some activities you can do are hiking, berry picking, sightseeing, and skiing, which is seasonal. Um, the national park is 64 years old and it is fairly small, but provides you with a great day of fun. Next we have the Oluvina Castle. It is located in the Lake Sierra right here. They began building it in 1475 and the castle is based off of St. Olaf. This castle was supposed to be a rebel against Russian attacks. It has lots of weapons inside the walls for when the Russian attack. Next is Kuarkin Archipelago World Heritage Site. This is in, located in the west coast of Finland. It's a great place for water sports and also some land activities. Um, it has beautiful sites everywhere you go in it, and it became popular in 2006. Next we have the Old Caribou Town. It is a vintage town with lots of red barns and lots of like vintage buildings. It is located in south of Caribou. It is a beautiful scene for lots of like tourist attractions and lots of tourists who go there say that it's one of their favorite spots to go in Finland. Um, next is Moose Manic. So if you're ever in the deep woods behind Mount Females, you should go there. It is a zoo and a restaurant. Um, they, you can see the moose, fallow deer, and reindeer. The cost for the zoo is free if you get something at the restaurant, otherwise it's seven euros. Next we have the Templeton Church. It was completed in 1969. It is a very cool church because it is underground. The church was designed by Taimo and Tuama, and they were brothers. The sides are rounded, and it has a dome top, which you can see right here. This is the top of the church. Um, under the church, it used to be a raid shelter, but is now a parking lot.
Next is Turku Castle. It's located on the River Ora. Um, this castle is more than 700 years old and was said to be made in the 1280s. Um, construction of the Renaissance Halls was in 1556, which expanded the castle greatly. Um, it has served as a court, prison, um, storehouse, and barracks. Um, in 1941, it was bombed and it is still being repaired today. Next we have the Saitama Fortress. It is located on an island next to Polensky. It has about 200 buildings over six islands under Helensky, which is the capital of Finland. Uh, today is one of the most tourist attractions along with the old Paravu. It has defended the Kingdom of Sweden, the Russian Empire, and the Public Republic of Finland. Next is Helsinki Cathedral. It is the main church in the Diocese of Helsinki. Um, Carl Ludwig Engel designed this cathedral. It was completed in 1852, and it used to be called St. Nicholas Church, and then later the Great Church, but is now called Helsinki Cathedral. Um, Twelve apostle statues stand guard on the roof of this cathedral. Over here in the map, we have all of the keys, where you can see all of the pictures and what they are. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is the Finland climate graph. I did Ulu, Helenski, Vasa, and Raveniemi. Ulu and Raveniemi both are near the northern part of Finland, and they during the winter they are both usually under 14 degrees Fahrenheit, and during the summer they are both around 59 degrees and they don't really go above that temperature. In Helensky and Vasa, they're more in the southern part of Finland. And in Helensky, it's at the very bottom part of Finland and is usually in between 68 and 59 degrees Fahrenheit, so around 64 degrees, and that's the warmest temperature in all of these. In Vasa, it only gets a little bit under 20 degrees during the winter, and in Helensky, it is the same as Vasa. They both, the climates, the graph that I followed for this, some of them ranged from 5 to 104 degrees, and some of them ranged from 14 to only 86 degrees. So it was a little bit confusing for that. But the precipitation and the rain during, like, between August and November is usually in between 20 and 30 inches for the whole amount. And usually the highest temperature in summer is in July, which usually in all places gets to around 60 degrees. Thank you. I'll start with the sauna. So uh, we worked to make, so saunas, saunas are definitely, as you guys know, um, is a big part of Finnish culture. So we made a mini sauna out of um, popsicle sticks. We did want to make a big one, but that would take way too long and wouldn't be like uh, very good. Probably because not a lot of people would be able to see it. Um, so saunas are actually um, thought to originate from Finland, and most people in Finland actually have saunas in their homes. Um, Finns uh, use the sauna at least like once a week. So they um, think that it's part of the daily routine. There are different types of sauna. Um, there are wood burning saunas, electric saunas, uh, infrared saunas, steam saunas, and smoke saunas. The wood burning sauna is the most uh, traditional sauna. Inside the sauna there's a wood burning stove that you feed with wood and steam to, until it gets to a certain temperature. Uh, the smoke sauna is the most rare type of sauna. It's done by wood, but there's no chimney to vent the smoke. Once the temperature is right, the room will be ventilated. 
So in our sauna we have the benches, uh, I don't know if you can see, but we have the benches that people uh, would sit on, and um, we have a table too, and um, another table on like a lower bench, um, not like one of the ones built in, but just one that would be sitting there for the rest of the towels on. Um, and some, uh, most of the time, uh, people will get into the sauna, um, and then go jump into, like, a really cold lake or something, um, and that sort of warm, cool cycle repeat that over and over again until, um, satisfaction is, like, guaranteed or something. Um, so they will repeat that, uh, process, um, until they're done with the sauna. And, like I said, they do that at least once a week. Um, so, we have, we made a painting of a cat, like a castle sort of, on, which, which is called Lake Samai. And it is one of the popular lakes of Finland. And some other popular lakes are Lake um, Anari. And the color or that is on Lake Samai, and the max depth of the lake is 269 feet, and um, there are almost 14,000 islands on the lake. Um, in the winter, the water turns to ice, and many people will play hockey, cross-country skiing, and skating. Many people, after dinner, go to the smoke sauna on Lake Samai, and, um, and um, the fire is allowed to die, and the smoke is ventilated out. The picture here is on the cabin of Lake Samai also, so both of the pictures are on Lake Samai. So, over here, there is a castle called St. Olaf's Castle. This castle is known as uh, Olympic. It's a hard name to um, uh, It is the most beautiful um, castle with three towers. Is the most north. It is in the most northern part of Finland. It is the oldest northern structure in Finland. It was built to protect from the eastern border and their attacks. <coughs> it was the first Sweden castle to be built to withstand artillery fire and meant to grant control of Savio Savio region. It is located in Salvia, Salvia. It was built in the 15th century. People can still visit it today during certain times and hours. It is on an island called Kerosalmi in South Carolina. Um, and to, to the general mural, all three of us worked together on it. Um, and it took us about a week to fully complete. Um, and it's a mix of watercolor for the water, um, and then acrylic paint for most of the rest of it, except for the watercolor again for some of the trees on this side. Um, and, uh, thank you for listening to our presentation. So before you head off, just a quick question. What was most, um, enjoyable part of your project. So I'll start with uh, Kenyon and then uh, um, I like to research it. The castle would look pretty cool. Would you go visit it? On the internet. No, I mean, when would you go visit the castle? Like, would like, I go visit it? Yeah. Sure. Alright. Great. Tell me um, I like painting the pictures, like the murals. Um, it was fun. Uh, my favorite part was probably doing the um, diorama. Grace did the um, four inventions of it, but I did the like walls and roof of it. Um, and it was yeah, it was fun to do and attempts not to get my fingers burned off by hot glue. Yeah, the benches and stuff. I looked in there. That's pretty neat how you how you did that. That was really cool. I think there's there's like a diagonal one in there too, like to hold up that stuff. That's pretty neat yeah. on the other side. Very cool stuff. Uh, thank you. Christmas vacation planners. We pitched the slogan, don't get your tinsel on a tangle, just call the Christmas vacation planners. Um, 
And on the cover, this is a picture of the Northern Lights. So you're going to have to get a passport to go to Finland. So you need to print out this form and fill it out. And then you need to bring it to your local town office and wait for your passport to come in the mail. This is the agenda that we need for five days vacation in Finland. Uh, right here, we have the information for the flights. We have where they're staying, where, where you could stay. And this is the picture of a cabin where you would stay. And then, yeah. Oh, and then that's the task, taxi for So these four images are, this top one is the Husky Safari. You will be going on a Husky Safari during your vacation. And you'll also be going on a reindeer safari where you can meet the reindeer and you can go on a sleigh ride with them. You can go ice fishing, which you're doing on day four in the morning. And you'll be going snowmobiling twice in the evening under the northern lights. So on day one, we have, well, obviously you're going to have some jet lag. So you're just going to eat breakfast and kind of explore the hotel or cabin. And then you're going to go eat lunch at a pizza place and the, in the town, and then in the afternoon you're going to go to the sauna, and then you're going to eat um, dinner at a grill, which is also downtown. Um, in the evening you're going to walk in the woods around the cabin because there's going to be the aura, aurora. Uh, on day two, uh, the, your morning activity will be the reindeer farm. Um, you'll be eating lunch. Uh, You'll be eating the lunch provided by the reindeer farm, and then you're going to be hiking a trail near the cabin for the afternoon afternoon activity, and then you're going to eat dinner. I don't know how to pronounce that word, but it's like it's a dinner place downtown too. Um, on day three, so for all of these activities, you'll be you will be taking the Avalon Taxi Oi taxi service to all the activities. Um, so on day three, you're going to go skiing in the morning, and then you will eat lunch at Mwasi Grill again. You will go on the Husky Safari in the afternoon, and you'll eat dinner at Lanolan Kavari, and then you will be going snowmobiling under the nor northern lights. For day four, in the morning you're going to go ice fishing, and then you're going to eat lunch during the ice fishing activity. And in the afternoon you're going to just like go back to the cabin and chill out. And then you're going to go to Design House Adoli for dinner. And then in the evening you're going to go to the Anari Ice Park. And on day five you're going to go see Lake Anari. And you're going to eat lunch at Papa Nong. And you're going to go to a war memorial in the afternoon. Eat dinner at Wanwan Kivari, and in the evening you're going to go snowmobiling under the Northern Lights. Again, our name was the Christmas Vacation Planners. Thank you for listening. So, like, what activity would you? like to do, like well, out of the ones that you chose, like what one would you be looking forward to the most? I'll oh, start. Uh, uh, either ice fishing or snowmobiling. Um, I think going to the reindeer farm would be really cool. Uh, maybe going to like, like the Nari or doing the hike. I, have you been ice fishing before? Yeah. I've never been, that sounds fun. It's fun. It and cold. Thank <laughs> you. Right. Right, good job. So we did the timeline of Finland. Uh, this timeline consists of major events and uh, stuff that happened throughout Finland's history and how it affected Finland's future. Uh, at the bottom here, we have the people who first settled in Finland all the way back in 8500 BC. Uh, 
we assume, we don't know this for sure, but we assume that they have come from other countries around Finland, uh, like Sweden or Germany, and migrated over to Finland uh, to have their own land. Uh, oh, so next we have, in 1000 AD, we have Sweden and Russia started fighting over Finland, or like the area of Finland. Um, and that happened a lot over Finland's history, with Sweden and Russia fighting for that territory until they became independent. Uh, then we have uh, from the 1000s to uh, the 1200s, uh, Sweden conquered Finland. Uh, after, as Colin mentioned, Sweden uh, and Russia have fought many wars and battles and have many conflicts. Uh, over the landmass of Finland, both claiming it was theirs in the early years. And Sweden finally won uh, in the last war, giving them the right to own the land. Russia was not happy about it, but Finland had the land. Um, in, 13, er, yeah, in 1323, F Finland and Sweden, er, R Russia and Sweden had their first major war over it or over Finland, which lasted a couple of years. Uh, then we have uh, Russia occupies Finland. As I said earlier, uh, this happened from 19, for 1741 to 1743. As I said earlier, Russia was not happy uh, in the fact that they lost to Sweden and wanted the landmass of Finland because they had great economic uh, Bounties, uh, as in the great forest area, which can be used for woodworking, and you can uh, use it to build uh, many houses and such. Um, from 1788 to 1790, Sweden and Russia have another war, and that that started when Russia started to occupy Finland. Uh, then we have Sir Nicholas II over here, uh, that, is yet, that gentleman over there. Uh, he was in 19, or 1899, uh, Russia controlled uh, Finland, and it was placed under the rule of Tsar uh, in, a monarch, in a monarch of Russia. So Finland did not have its own, or they had a constitution that was written by the people, but it was not like legalized by the Russians since the Russians controlled the Finnish government and they did not allow uh, Finnish, the Finnish language to be the national language and they enforced Russian rule. Um, in 1903 Russia suspended the constitution of Finland and they basically made the Finns like listen to them and they basically had like no right rights for anything. Uh, over here, this is the, a picture of the Finnish resistance, and it began. It uh, they began. The Finnish people began a six-day-long strike in the capital city of Helsinki, Helsinki. Um, and the purpose of the resist or er, protest was to oppose Russian rule, and basically the Finnish people wanted to practice their own religion and have their native language become the official language of Finland. Um, in 1906, Finland made their first parliament, and the people of the parliament were elected by adult citizens. Uh, Finland was also the first country to allow women to vote. Uh, in 1906, we can see over here, it might be hard, but the first woman is voting at a polling station in Finland. Um, so Finland stayed out of World War Two or World War One because they were short on troops and they couldn't really go anywhere because Russia was surrounding them, basically. Uh, in nineteen seventy or nineteen seventeen, uh, Finland declared independence from Russia. Uh, also, from uh, around 1916 to 1917, uh, Russia's government was collapsing, 
Uh, so Finland, sensing this, decided it would be a good time to announce its freedom from Russia and declare, declare itself as its own country. Um, in 1918, there was a civil war in Finland between the White Army, which was sponsored by Germany, and the Red Army that was sponsored by Russia, with the White Army being the good guys. Uh, over here, we have a picture of the Red Army. As Colin said earlier, they were sponsored by Russia, and they wanted to make a so they wanted the new country to be socialist, which would be closer, uh, and they wanted to work with Russia more. As the White Army did not, they were non-socialist, and they didn't want to work with Russia, but most more so Germany. Uh, so they were called the non-socialists. Um, in 1921. Finland and Sweden started like a small fight over the Aland Islands and they were declared Finland's by territory by the League of Nations, which is like a group of several countries. Uh, in 1939, which is around the time of World War II, uh, the Winter War begins uh, between the Soviet Union troops and uh, Finland. Uh, how it started is the Soviet Union moved troops through Finland, Finland and they wanted to take Finland's land, but Finland did not want the Russia, Russians to take their land. So they fought back in a vigorous war, uh, and they used uh, interesting tactics such as using skis to perambulate over the snow, and wearing white, it's hard to see in this black and white photo, but they would wear white coats as to blend into the snow and not let their enemies see them as well. Um, between 1939 and 1945, Russia invaded Finland twice, and that was during the time of World War II. And it was kind of like the same thing here. They would dress up in white with skis and, like, hide pretty much. So in 1940, uh, Finland signs a uh, biased peace treaty uh, with Russian, uh, with Russian authority, which gave uh, the Russian authority a giant chunk of Finland land. It was about a little less than 10 percent of like the whole Finland land, and it was unfair to the Finnish people because they also had to pay a reparation reparation debt. Uh, to Russia, which is basically Russian saying, you caused these damages and it's your fault, so give us money. So Finland had to do that, or Russians would just like invade them again, and they didn't want that, so they paid that. Um, in 1950, Jules K. Pesavi was elected president of Finland, and he made very strong economic ties with the Soviet Union, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, and that's him right there. Uh, in 1955, Russian returns uh, Pakala to Finland and made a new peace treaty that was much more fair to Finland. Uh, Pakala is the landmass that the Ru after World War II that the Russians took from Finland. Uh, they decided to give it back because Finland had bec uh, become a close economic and political ally to Russia. And as they're developing closer bonds, they decided that it was unfair of them to keep this uh, one of Finland's giant land masses. Uh, so they gave it back to them in 1955. Yeah. Um, in 1961, Finland joined the European Free Trade Association. Uh, between 1970 and the 1980s, uh, Finland builds four nuclear power plants in Finland to supply energy to the whole country. What Finland was relying on earlier for their country's power supply was mainly hydroelectric dams or hydroelectric plants that would generate uh, electricity from the flowing water in their country. And since Finland has a lot of lakes and rivers and such, that they could do that pretty easily. But now with these four new uh, nuclear power plants, they could generate uh, power much more quickly and efficiently. Um, in 2000, the first woman president was elected. Her name was Tahara Halonen. 
Uh, in 2002, uh, Finland swapped over to using the euro because many countries uh, in Europe were using the euro and it's mainly accepted more than like the Finnish currency. Uh, I do not know what the Finnish currency is called, but they switched, but it's not worth much compared to the euro, which is being used by other countries. Um, and in 2020, which is this year, dogs are used to help sniff out COVID in airports. Um, I believe they're the first country to start doing this. And that's about it. Thank you. Most interesting piece of information that you that you thought. Um, well, for my for my research paper, I studied the Sami, and I thought they were very interesting, which is like the native people of Finland, and they're the native people of Sweden, Finland, and Norway. And before before settlers came, they owned they like used all of the land in Finland. Uh, I guess the most interesting topic for me to look on, since my re my research paper was mainly on the wars and how they affected the uh, economic and political status of the country, I guess was to learn about the Winter War and different tactics that they used uh, when they were fighting the Russians and or when the Russians were fighting Finnish. Uh, because, as I said earlier, they were, they were using skis, they were using camel, and I just thought that was really interesting. All right, cool, thank you. I did Finland economy. Uh, Finland has a highly industrialized mixed economy. That means there are both aspects of communism and capitalism. Finland relies heavily on manufacturing. The largest industries in Finland are metals, metals and metal products, electronics, machinery, scientific instruments, shipbuilding, pulp and paper, chemicals, textiles, and clothing. Most of the agricultural areas are in the south and west because of the harsh conditions um, to keep farm. Dairy farming and livestock production accounts it accounts for most of the income for farmers. Two thirds of the land in Finland is forestry, making forestry a big part of the economy. Um, paper and wood products are some of the largest exports in Finland. Minerals that are mined in the fort in Finland consist of gold, copper, silver, nickel, stone, talc, and zinc. In the motor industry, Finland produces mostly tractors, forest machines, military vehicles, trucks, and buses. The world's largest cruise ships are also produced in Finland. Um, the euro is used by 19 countries of the European Union. Eleven of these countries adopted the euro on January January 1st, 1999. The euro is equal to $1.17. The euro is divided into 100 cents. The euros come in coins and in banknotes, which are like bills. The euro coins come in 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 50 cents. And the 1 euro and 2 euro, which is 1 euro and 2 euro. Um, on all of the cent coins, there is the Finnish Republic lion, and the one in your design is shows two swans flying, to, and that w that design was made to commemorate the 80th anniversary of independence in Finland. On the two year design, there is cloud cloudberry cloudberry and cloudberry flowers. The banknote the banknotes come in. 5 euros, 10 euros, 20 euros, 50 euros, 100 euros, 200 euros, and 500 euros. There are many security checks to make sure the banknote is real. You can mostly tell if a banknote is real by the unique feel by the printer. And there are also many other security checks that are made with a special device. So, what facts did you find in terms of Um. I, I like to learn about the euros because I like I kind of knew what the euro was and like like the currency of, in Europe, but it was kind of it was kind of cool learning about it and also um, 
Finland, they don't use the 500 euro anymore because of like, because of like, um, people like faking it and getting away with it. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I did the symbols of Finland. Um, and so I'll start with like the flag. But Finland has two flags. There is like the uh, state flag and the national flag. Um, the flag became like the uh, flag on May uh, 29, 1918. Um, and the national flag, this one, is used by most Finnish people, and it's like the, it's like their banner. And the state flag is used on government buildings and some like ships and stuff like that. Um, the flag design is a Scandinavian cross, and the Scandinavian cross is used on many um, flags in the northern European area. And the flag design originally comes from Denmark. On December 6, 1917, um, um, Finland declared independence from Russia, and then um, in May of 1918, they were able to change that to their flag. And then there is the national anthem, which, com which was composed by what is now the national poet of Finland, uh, J. L. Lindbergh. And he wrote the poem to uh, like spread his patriotic feelings about Finland to more people. And the music for the anthem was originally written by Frederick uh, Passius. Um, and it was originally went, written in Swedish and was called Vard's Land, meaning our land, but is now called um, Mam and Finnish. Um, so then I also did two, uh, I did an animal and a plant of Finland that are in there. So for the animal, I did the wolverine, which is um, a small weasel that is found in, air, in, in air, some areas of North America, um, Europe, and Asia. And they like to live in um, cold, like treeless uh, plains known as tundras. Um, their nickname is known as the glutton, and their scientific name is Gulo Gulo. And they're, they're, when they're fully grown, they're around three and a half feet long. Um, they are the largest weasel in the, like, the weasel family of animals, but they're still pretty small. Um, and they look similar to a dog and like a bear, like a bear-sized dog. Um, with, and then they have like either like black or brown fur with like this white stripe on their, on their side. Uh, and even for their size, they're actually pretty powerful. So for hunting, they will either scavenge um, from other like animals like wolves, or uh, they will jump onto the backs of like um, deer, like reindeer, and wait and, and wait for the reindeer to be exhausted. Exhausted, and once the deer is exhausted, they'll like tear them apart and then like eat them and leave other like the scraps and like hide them for later. Um, they have, and they, they also have a very powerful sense of smell, which they can use to smell animals that are hibernating, and then they'll go and dig holes under the ground to get to them. Um, and currently, the wolverine is is kind of rare because people would hunt it for its fur, and um, farmers would kill it because it would attack their livestock. And so, for my plant, I did the cloudberry, and the cloudberry is a fruit that grows and cold arctic areas um, and it is from the rose family of plants and it is also known as a salmon berry, uh, bake apple, or a yellow berry. The Eskimo and Sami tribes um, often collect, the, uh, collect them in the fall and then freeze them for the winter. Uh, they, uh, they can be used, they are sold for use in uh, liquor, tarts, and other preservatives. Um, the, so the fruit, they have like the yellow like fruit that turns kind of this orangish color when they're ripe. And the cloudberry like plant is like perennial so that it comes back um, after like it dies in the winter and the spring. And then like the cycle repeats over and over. Uh, uh, 
So when when they're when they first grow, the berries are white, but then when they're fully grown, they're like a reddish orange, like yellow color. Uh, and th th they're harvested from August to September, and they actually are a pretty like rare fruit because of where they are located in the very like northern cold areas of the world. Um, but they are also like a very popular fruit, and countries like Denmark will like often import lots of them from Finland to be able to get them um, because they don't grow anywhere else. I think I like studying the Wolverine because <laughs> all like like just because they're such an interesting creature. Yeah. They have such a large range too for such a small animal. Yeah. I, I, I was reading about them the other day, and, and they could they could run you know forty to fifty miles in a day, and just just yeah. keep on going. They have so much wow. power, it's really cool. They're tough. They are very tough. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thanks. Good morning, and welcome to Finnish News. Now over to Marissa. COVID-19 is a virus that comes from bats and is part of a large family of coronaviruses. COVID-19 Detection Dogs COVID-19 is a virus that comes from bats and is part of a large family of coronaviruses. When COVID-19 became a global pandemic, public transportation was just one of the many businesses that had to shut down. Now, Finland has a way to make public transportation safe again. Their solution is the incredible power of the dog's nose. The Helsinki Venta Airport has started a trial with COVID-19 detection dogs. The trial consists of 15 dogs and 10 instructors and will last four months. It could significantly impact the spread of COVID-19 at the largest Finnish airport and help change the course of reopening the world. The organization training the dogs is called Wise Nose. Dogs detect coronavirus faster and better than some tests. These dogs were previously used to detect cancer and other illnesses. When passengers arrive at the airport, they take a voluntary swipe of a cloth and drop it into a cup. The dogs then sniff the cup and bark if they detect COVID. If they bark, the, there is a voluntary swab test to deny or confirm the results. The whole procedure takes only a few minutes. While the test is voluntary, it may be later forced upon the passengers. The dogs can detect the virus five days before symptoms develop. Anna Hamm Workman is a University of Helsinki professor helping to train the dogs. She states, they are very good at detecting coronavirus. We came close to 100% sensitivity. However, more research is needed to prove the accuracy. The deputy mayor of Vanta, Tina Arcantoyo, says the dogs could possibly, in the future, go around passengers in a similar way to custom dogs. He also states, can the dogs sniff all passengers or only some of them? Everything is currently based on consent. Four of the dogs involved in the trial are E.T., Valo, Kasi, and Nina. Dogs can be infected with coronavirus, but studies show that they cannot pass the virus to other dogs as easily as some mammals. They do not significantly impact the spread of COVID-19, and they can rarely spread COVID-19 from animals to humans. The trial is completely voluntary, but if it works, it could open up airports around the world again. People could have a result in a matter of minutes instead of a few days. The airport is also making plans to start testing. They are going to use microbiological cabinets designed to protect the test sample from contamination. The cabinets will also protect staff from being infected. The airport served around 121,861,082 passengers in 2019. It is the 30th busiest airport in Europe and the 4th busiest airport in the Nordic countries. The Finnish airline Finnair is a big airline at the airport. It is the main airport in the area, and because of its location, it is a popular transfer for Asia, Europe and North America. This is a fascinating discovery. Back to you, Ava. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak, there are some new restaurant restrictions that will be getting put in place. The government will be tightening up on the restrictions in the regions of Finland 
that are in the accelerations or spreading stages of the epidemic. In these regions, restaurants will be required to stop serving alcohol at 10 p.m. and will be required to close all doors by 11. These new restrictions will take place as soon as Sunday. The rules will be in effect until the 31st of October, but will most likely be in place for a longer time period. The restrictions in the provinces of Finland will stay put in place for now. These provinces did not get as affected by COVID. Their more laid-back restrictions allow alcohol to be served until the a.m. Catering can be up and running until 1 a.m. Also, in this part of the country, there are no limits on the amount of people held at gatherings or events. In the regional capital of Ostrobothnia, had accounted up to one third of the new 227 corona cases since Tuesday. Over the weekend, 173 new cases were reported. This is considered a high number of cases for the size of the, of the town. Finland's government is expected to confirm the stricter restrictions that are needed to be put in place in order to stop the virus. The city is going on a three-week lockdown. The rules consist that there may be no public events or gatherings with 15, 50 or more people. Catering must stop serving and welcoming people at 10 o'clock. Uh, they must close down completely by 11. The catering business is only allowed to have half the amount of people that they were originally allowed to have at one event. A chief physician at the Finnish Health and Welfare Institution revealed that at least 200, or 200 coronavirus cases in the last two months have been traced to restaurants. It's very difficult to say where the cases have come from, but there is a very high chance that a couple hundred of them have come from restaurants. In the capital of Helsinki, a late-night restaurant is believed to be where 40 coronavirus infections came from. The name of the restaurant has not yet been disclosed to the public. Prime Minister Sarah Marin stated on Wednesday that their government evening class will discuss the act about the disease. Things that will be discussed and thought upon are related to remote learning, remote works, along with public gatherings, hobbies, etc. Back to you, Marissa. Pollution is environmental contaminants that are in large enough quantities to cause damage. Pollution is caused by human activities. While some people may think that pollution is only in the air or ground or water, litter, noise, and artificial light are also considered pollution. Pollution contributes to climate change or global warming. Climate change is affecting the whole world, Finland included. Finnish people want to see a stronger response to the climate emergency. A peaceful protest was organized by Ilo Kapnia. The protest took place on October 3rd in Helsinki. There was a notice submitted to the police officers, but it did not mention a later traffic obscurance. After being ordered to disperse, the protesters moved into a busy road. The protesters posed no threat to the police officers and didn't cause a big traffic congestion. They were completely nonviolent. The police sprayed pepper spray many times, causing severe reactions for some people. The police prevented some people from rinsing their faces after being sprayed with pepper spray. It was not until after the police had tried other measures, like physically carrying protesters, using instructions and requests. Nothing worked. The protest lasted four hours longer than scheduled. The protest started at 1 p.m. and ended at 7 p.m., Sakara Melander says. Carrying or unlocking people chained to each other could have caused physical injury, so the police resorted to the spray. The police protest was given a warning before the spray. They were given five minutes to vacate the road. The Helsinki Police Department viewed the pepper spray as a way to break up the traffic obstruction. As recounted on Twitter, there was a substantial traffic obstruction and, in light of how long the situation had continued, police resorted to the most lenient forcible measure as disperse, disposal to disperse the crowd. It was spray in this case. The Minister of Interior, Maria Ohio says, use of force must always be the last resort and must always be well justified. Legal experts say that the police may have used excessive force. The European Court of Human Rights ruled that authorities should refrain from using forces to break up nonviolent protests. The National Police Board of Finland reviewed the incident and ruled that the spray was warranted. In 2019, a list by Let Michael Lettenmeyer, a postdoctoral researcher at Aalto University in Finland, came out on ways we can help stop climate change. This was just before the climate change process. He says, 
Everyone should start taking action and making changes for the benefit our, of our climate. There is no alternative. After all, many lifestyle changes also lead to a benefit of our, our climate. Lattenmeyer was one of the head researchers of a study on lifestyle carbon footprints published by the Finnish Innovation Fund. Some suggestions are switching your car for a bicycle or public transportation, switching your electricity for environmentally friendly electricity, and reducing the amount of meat and food waste that comes out of your meals. Back to you, Eva. After all the stressfulness everyone has been dealing with, yoga, on the other hand, is far from stressful. If you are interested in doing some sort of yoga, there are many places that you could look into around the Helsinki district that offer many different disciplines. The main yoga studios are located in the capital of Finland. Nordic yoga's signature class is hot yoga. Hot yoga is done in a very hot room, about the temperature of a hot day in India. India is where hot yoga originated from. As winter is on its way, yoga can be very therapeutic. In Nicole's hot yoga class, there is a full body workout along with lots of sweating in a hot room. To inspire beginners and challenge the regulars, she brings more advanced poses. Nordic yoga also offers bar classes. Whether you're just trying to get fit or you're trying to deepen your yoga practice, Nordic yoga has an option for you. For those of you who want to do yoga at home, Nordic yoga also offers an online option. Purna yoga means complete and scan skirt. They offer immediate practice for more experienced yogis. The yoga poses that Purna yoga practices are deeply explored to bring awareness and energetic flow into the body. They also offer nutrition support and post-natural and fertility yoga. Oh My Goodness Yoga, also known as OMG, offers a holistic experience. OMG practices yoga outside of the studio through the Believe Lifestyle Cafe. The students at OMG get treated to Super Bowls and plant-based smoothies. This is to complement the student's wellness journey and is a refreshing end to every class. Most classes are taught and finished. My Soar Yoga is a yoga studio that supports more disciplined practices. Many get pretty intimidated. But what beginners don't know is that it's actually a really good foundation for them to start. The sequence is set so that when you repeat it enough, it's easier to get familiar with the poses. This is the only yoga practice that is more hands-on. Some advanced poses such as the handstand and other advanced poses are drop backs and jump throats. Restorative yoga is becoming very popular in Finland these days. They focus more on recovery poses. Nicole also teaches the yin class here. Nicole makes her students hold all poses for around three to five minutes. One of the students stated that she was treated to a back and hip massage, which is very welcoming to a beginner or anyone in that matter. She also shared with us that her favorite teacher prints inspirational quotes for her students. You should definitely check some out some of these yoga classes yoga studios out. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching Finnish News. So your project, what did you find with the most interesting fact? Um, maybe that the COVID-19 drugs can protect the bodies from the symptoms. So if people are asymptomatic, they can still get results. Um, I didn't know that yoga originated in India, so that was pretty cool. Alright, thank you.